Hi guys, my name is Bas and welcome to another SPSS to APA tutorial. In this tutorial series, I will show you guys how you can get to the right SPSS output and how to convert that in, Word, uh, in, <coughs> in Microsoft Word to the right APA format. So today we're going to have a look at the one-way ANOVA. And if you want to know how to perform this ANOVA, I, will, uh, I would suggest that you look at my SPSS tutorial videos because they explain in depth how uh, ANOVAs work. But today we're going to focus on the output. So how do you present it in an APA kind of manner? So we're going to go to Analyze, Compare Means, One Way ANOVA. And then the dependent list in this case is Religious Commitment 1, Religious Commitment 2, and let's put them in the right order, and Length. Uh, and the Factor, so the independent variable, is Gender. So we want to know whether the length of uh, whether the length of how long you go to church and how committed you are to religion, whether the difference between the three gender groups, with one being male, two being female, and three being all other genders. Um, contrast you're gonna leave as this, post hoc you're gonna leave as this, and at options you select descriptive, so you check that box. Then you press continue, then you press paste, then you go to the syntax screen, which is now opened, then you select the code and press the big green play button. And then you get, first of all, the descriptives table, which shows the uh, number of respondents and the means and the standard deviations for every group for the three uh, dependent variables. So if, for example, if, if we look at length, so how long uh, have I belonged to this church, we can see that the means for men is 1.33, the means for women is 1.27, and the means for all other genders is 1.24. And then if we actually look at the ANOVA tables, we can see that the F values are 1.85, 4.62, and 11.82. And that the length is not significant, that the, uh, uh, and that the religious commitment 1 and religious commitment 2 are significant differences. So that means that there's a difference between the groups. So once again, if you want to know how an ANOVA works, I suggest looking at my SPSS tutorials. This is purely focused on the output. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna uh, insert this into a right APA format. And we're gonna do that, like I said, in Word. So if we go to a Word document, we are gonna make a table. And if we're gonna make a table, we want to know how many rows and how many columns that table should have. So if we're gonna look at the rows, the first one is gonna be the title. The second one is gonna be the measure. The third row is gonna be empty. Uh, the fourth row, uh, the fifth, fourth row is going to be the variable, then variable number two and variable number three. So in this case, length, religious commitment one and religious commitment two. And then the last row is going to be a note. So in total, there will be seven rows. Well, if we look at the columns, uh, there's going to be first of all be the measure column, then the means of the first variable, the standard deviation of the, uh, the, of the first group, the standard deviation of the first group, the means of the second group, standard deviation of the second group, the uh, means of the third group, and the standard deviation of the third group. Then the F values, and whether they are significant or not, and that's it. So that means a total of eight columns. So if we're gonna go to a next page, and select insert, and then table, and we're gonna do seven rows, and eight columns. So like this, a seven by eight table. Then the title is going to be table one, and you're going to do that in bold. So table one, and then below that, it's going to be uh, in italics and not in bold, ANOVA table. And we're going to make that one a little bit bigger. Are you going to do that? I want you to, yes, like this, looks a bit better. Okay, then uh, the second row was going to be a uh, measure measure the third row was going to be empty the fourth row is going to be a uh, variable one which was called length the second variable is called relig commit one and the third one is relig commit two and the last one is the note okay and then in terms i'm going to move this back because it looks absolutely horrible uh, <laughs> Uh, and if we then uh, take a look at the columns, uh, the first, this column is going to be empty, and then the measure is going to be uh, in italics. Uh, uh, this one is going to be in italics M, uh, M, 
This one is going to be in italics SD. This one is going to be in italics M. This one is going to be in italics SD. This one is going to be in italics M. And this one is going to be in italics SD. And then uh, above that, we're going to write the three groups. So the first group is without italics male. The second group is female. And the third group is others. Okay, and then we're gonna fill in those. Uh, we're gonna fill in those uh, descriptive statistics. So we're gonna go back to our. If we make this a bit smaller, like this. Yes. Now we can fill it in. So the means of the male in the length group was 1.33. And make sure that you round it off to two decimals. Uh, and the standard deviation of that is point. Uh, 70 like once again uh, use uh, two decimals and don't write the zero in front of the dot then for females the length is on average 1.27 and the standard deviation of that is 0.61 and for others the mean was uh, 1.24 with a standard deviation of 0.05 uh, is that correct? Point, no, it's not correct. Point, uh, 62. Point 62. Yes. And then we're going to do the same for religious commitment one. The males in religious commitment one have an average of 3.46 with a standard deviation of 1.09. The females have an average religion, religious commitment one of 3.39. With an average, uh, with a standard deviation of 1.02. And the others group has an average of 3.16, so it's a bit lower. With a uh, standard deviation of uh, 0.84. And then last but not least, the religious commitment to the men have an average of 3.26. With a standard deviation of uh, 3.26, with a standard deviation of uh, 1.23 the females have an average of 3.54 with a standard deviation of 1.17 and the others have a standard deviation of 3.33 with a standard deviation of 1.04 uh, yes wait these standard deviations are not correct uh, Oh wait, they are correct, they are correct like this, yes. Okay, so, uh, and then last but not least, we're gonna fill in the F value, which is in italics, and then between brackets, we first of all write the first degrees of freedom, which in this case is gonna be two, and then a comma, because the degrees of freedom is written over here, so it's two, and then uh, the second one is uh, the biggest total uh, degrees of freedom. So in this case, it's 2113. 2113. And then you close the brackets again. Um, and then we're gonna fill in whether they are, uh, what the F values are. So for length, it was 8.85, because you can see that over here for the F value, 1.85, and it's not significant, so we don't add a star. For religious commitment one, the F value is 4.85. Uh, 62 and it is uh, it is uh, significant with a, uh, because it's lower than 0 0.05 so we add one star and the third one uh, so religious commitment 2 has an f value of 11.82 and it's lower than zero it's all lower than the alpha of 0 0.01 so we add two stars and then the note is going to be that uh, one star means P is lower than, 0 point, than 0 0.05, comma, and two stars is, means P is lo, smaller than uh, the alpha of 0 0.01. Okay, so these are all the uh, these are all the uh, numbers you need to insert, and now we're gonna make it look like an APA uh, model because it currently doesn't at all. So first of all, we're gonna select everything. Well, not everything. <laughs> we're gonna select this table and go to home. And then change the letter, uh, change the font to Times New Roman, and the uh, 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 the size to 12, and it immediately looks a tiny bit better. Then we're gonna select the top row, and we're gonna go to Table Design, uh, to Layout, and then Merge 
cells. And we're going to select the lowest that row and also merge cells. And we're going to do the same for the one with male and the one in between. So merge cells. The same for female and the one next to it, merge cells. And the same for others. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to home and we're going to center those three. Uh, we're going to center those three words. Uh, so it looks like this. And now it looks a lot better actually. Okay. Um, and what we're now going to do is we're going to remove all the borders because ANOVA tables uh, usually, uh, most of all, don't have any borders. So we select the entire table, go to table design and then borders, and then we select no borders at all. Okay, so it looks like this. So we're almost getting there. Oh yeah, and by the way, make sure that note is written in italics. The P, this P is in italics. No, yes, okay, it doesn't matter. And this P is in italics. Okay, yes, perfect. Um, and now we're gonna add a few lines. We're gonna add a line uh, between the title and measure and one below uh, all the uh, names of the, uh, of the categories. So we're gonna do one over here. And so we're gonna select the top row and then borders and then a bottom border like this. Then we're gonna select the three categories of the independent variable and we're gonna give those bottom borders as well. No, only of those. Why can I not do that? Only those three and then borders and then bottom border. No, why can I not do that? Uh, that's weird. Okay, then we're gonna select these three and give them top borders. Does that work? Yes, top borders. Okay, like this, perfect. And then we're gonna go to the last, uh, we're gonna go to the uh, last row last row and give them top borders well nay no no border uh, only top borders yes like this and now last but not least we're gonna select the with the right mouse button the whole table with the right mouse button and <laughs> yes and then uh out of it and out of it to contents okay and now it looks like this and this is what it should look like so this is an apa table for one-way anova this is how it uh, should look like completely. Only the only thing I'm doubting, yes, is that the F should be in italics, but the numbers should be in normal size, so not italics, like this. Okay, this is perfect. So this is what a one-way ANOVA APA table looks like. If this video was helpful to you, then please leave a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I wanna make BuzzPSS grow as much as possible, so every single uh, so every single subscription would be very helpful. Okay, and for now, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Ciao.